Hello, my name is Aaron. Um, I thought today I'd show you um, a little workaround if you're trying to install Open Sussy on a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, when I've tried it, um, even with the latest Tumbleweed uh, ISO, Net ISO, um, and here's the, this is the one you choose here, um, which is the latest for ARM64 boards. Um, and obviously you use the net image because that has gives you way more options to install extra desktops, software, etc. than the offline image. Um, but when, when you normally go to install it, my experience is it comes up with the black screen after you click install um, and nothing happens. Now, checking the ARM wiki on the open sussy page, it says that it is bootable. The, the ISO is bootable and it should work. However, there's still um, issues with it um, when trying to get just to the setup screen to continue the installation of, of, of OpenSUSE. So it's, um, I've, and the stuff I'm about to do here and show you is, is pretty um, easy just to do. Um, but it's, it's disappointing that it still doesn't work. Um, although, to be fair to OpenSUSE, there's so many single boards for ARM64 and they can't do an individual ISO for each individual board. That would just be ridiculous because you, know, you end up having hundreds of ISOs. Um, but they should add this little tip into this screen here as a workaround because um, if, if people like OpenSUSE and want to use it and, and install it properly, on like a SSD or something like that, then th this is something which is really handy um, to know of because it doesn't mention it in the little wiki here um, about this little tip I'm about to show you. So I if you boot up the ISO and you just get a blank screen and nothing else happens, no matter how long you leave it for, this little tip will um, help you. As it says here, it says it is possible to directly install the DVD ISO or the Net ISO on Raspberry Pi 4. You just need a USB stick with as much space, etc., etc. So, as far as they're concerned, it should work, but in my experience, um, it doesn't, at least out of the box. So, I, I filmed it on my GoPro to show you and excuse the poor videoing um, of what to do. So, as you can see here, you, you write your net ISO into a USB stick or SD card if, if, if you still use SD cards and then it'll come up with the uh, installation screen the, the original boot menu where it's got install, upgrade, as you can see here it's starting to load now um, and it will come up with this and I'm, I'm gonna leave this going here in real time so you can see how long it takes because part of this process after you alter some minor things it will take some time so this screen here when it gets the installation you press E so you can edit the line and this line here where it says Linux that's the line you need to edit now I've removed splash equal silent so you can actually see the on-screen log files that come out because if that's there it just blanks the screen by default so take that away so we can see what's happening then you add no mode set this basically just enables the installer to use a very basic set of drivers, like a failsafe um, in Windows, so to speak, just to get the system loaded. Now, this works quite okay with the Raspberry Pi. Obviously, if you're having similar issues with another single board computer, you could do the same thing. On the other hand, using that can have unintended consequences later on, especially if it needs a specific drivers because it won't load any proprietary um, drivers if it's not being detected. So use it as a as a caution. Um, but now for the Raspberry Pi, so once you put that in, you press Control X and it will continue to boot. And this next process will take some time because it will say in just a moment here as it flicks through all the hardware detecting there um, it will come up saying loading basic drivers and at this point it 
and there it is there, loading basic drivers. This point will take many, many minutes. Um, a good seven or eight minutes uh, on average, maybe five if you're lucky, but this will take some time. Don't reboot the Pi. Yeah, give it time. It will eventually work. I know a lot of people don't have patience, but it is worth the wait, trust me, because this does work. So I'm going to skip ahead now because this will take some time. But eventually you'll get the rest of the screen coming up where it gets past this point. And I'm already, what, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes in, six minutes. There we go, seven minutes. That's, so that's the best part of seven minutes to get to this point. So after it loads basic drivers, it says OK. Then the rest of the hardware detection starts going. And it'll start detecting anything else that it needs to boot up with for the for the setup program that it requires. And again, this this will take another couple of minutes to go through. Again, just let it sit there. It'll it'll eventually get there. So, but just skip ahead a bit more. As you can see, it's found a few more um, probing of the hardware devices, and we go a bit more. And then it's eventually load up the splash screen for the setup, which most people would be familiar with for the traditional open uh setup screen, where you then you can go through the graphical interface to go and choose the desktop, choose your packages, change system options, security settings, etc., etc. All the ones we love and we love and love, so to speak. So. The, 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 once you get to the graphical screen, it will still take some time to um, install because there's at least a thousand packages that's to download, and on the Pi it will take some time to do. Um, so again, you just have to be patient, let it go, you go and grab a cup of tea or something. But once everything is installed, once a setup process is done and the Pi reboots and you get into the main um, whatever, if you just chose a command setup, or if you just went in to chose XFCE, whatever you, once this open source is running, the boot times is back to normal. You're not gonna wait 10 minutes per boot. So, so don't think this is gonna happen every single time you boot up, it doesn't. Once it's installed, it reboots, it will boot up as a normal operating system would on a Raspberry Pi. So it's not gonna take 10 minutes every single time you reboot. And there's that lovely graphical screen and you just continue through it. So I hope this helps. Um, I'll add this text here in the YouTube uh, screen to show you um, uh, just the what to do, the, the line, the adding the no mod set line, um, which is a good tip. And it, it, this no mod set can help for um, PCs if you're having issues with booting up and you get no screen because it can't load a driver or can't find a driver in the kernel, just add no mode set to the end of the Linux line and it can at least get you out of trouble to try and find a solution to the problems. So I hope this helps um, and enjoy using OpenSUSE on your Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching. Bye.